Welcome to lecture number 11 on the visualization of graphs. Today we want to talk about the crossing lemma and its applications. In the first part we will define the crossing number of a graph and we will have a look at the famous hanani tab theorem and its implications on the number of crossings in a drawing. For any graph, the crossing number is defined as the smallest number of crossings that we have in any drawing of the graph. We always talk about drawings in the plane now, so I will omit it in the future. So however you draw this graph, there is no way to draw it with fewer than CR of G crossings. For planar graphs, this is clearly a zero, but we also know, for example, for the K33, it's non-planar, so it needs at least one crossing, and we can draw it with one crossing, so the crossing number is 1. And the same also holds for the K5. In a crossing minimal drawing of a graph, we have some properties that can be proven. For example, no edge can be self-intersecting. That means we cannot have this situation, we have an edge that intersects itself. Because if we have this, then we can locally reroute the edge and reduce the number of crossings by one. Also, edges that have a common endpoint cannot intersect. Because if we look at this situation, again we can do some local rerouting. We take the green edge and follow the blue here and then go up. And the blue follows the green here and then goes down. The number of crossings between the blue and the green goes down by one. We can have new crossings because let's say there's an edge that crosses this part of the blue, now it crosses the green. And this crossing might not have been there before, but the crossing point was there before. So for every crossing that we have here, there was a crossing here at the same position. So the number of crossings goes down by one. Also, two edges intersect at most once. If we look at two edges that intersect twice, then again we can do some rerouting. We locally route the blue here and the green around. And finally, we can assume that no two edges intersect at the same point. This is not necessarily true, but well, we can always adjust it by just moving one edge a tiny little bit without increasing the number of crossings. So this just makes it a bit easier. Such a drawing that has these properties is called a topological drawing. And all drawings that minimize the number of crossings of graph are topological. Well, there is one thing we have to be careful here if we look at the situation. It could be that we have another red edge here that crosses the blue edge once and the green edge once, and after we do the rerouting, it now crosses the blue twice. And there can be even more of those, though it can be that in this step, the number of pairs of edges that cross twice even goes up. But still, the number of crossings in total is reduced by two. So if you repeat this procedure, at some point it terminates, because we can only have a finite number of crossings between any pairs of edges, so only a finite number of crossings in total. There's a classical theorem by Hanani that he proved in 1943 by passing. So it was not what he wanted to prove, but he needed it as a tool. And Tut in 1970 rediscovered it and formulated it. And that theorem says a graph is planar if and only if it has a drawing in which all pairs of vertexes and edges cross an even number of times. So one direction is clear. If it's planar, it has a planar drawing. And in a planar drawing, all pairs of edges cross zero times, which is even. For the other direction, there are two ways to prove it. One way is by induction. We iteratively contract an edge, then we get a planar drawing, and then we extend it again, and then we're done. But the way Hanani did it was slightly different. He showed that every drawing of the K5 and every drawing of the K33 must have a pair of edges that crosses an odd number of times. And 
every non-planar graph, that one we know, has k5 or k3 as a minor. So that means that there are two independent paths that correspond to the edges that cross here, and there is an odd number of crossings between these paths. And then there must be at least two edges that cross an odd number of times on these paths, because if we only have even crossings, then we cannot get to a total odd number. And that means that every non-planar graph must have at least one pair of edges that cross an odd number of times. Following from this, it seems like we can get rid of many crossings. So if we have a non-topological drawing, then we can take any pairs of edges that cross at least twice and remove two crossings, and do that until every edge is crossed only once. That would mean that the number of crossings we require only depends on the number of pairs of edges that cross an odd number of times, because those with even number we can reduce, and those with odd we can reduce to one. For that, there is the definition of the odd crossing number. The odd crossing number is exactly the smallest number of pairs of edges that cross oddly in a drawing of G. And it follows from Hanani Tat that if the odd crossing number is zero, then the crossing number is also zero, because then we only have even number of crossings between each pair. But the question is, are they the same? And actually, surprisingly, this is not the case. Pelsmeier, Schäfer and Stefankovic could show that there is some graph where the odd crossing number is strictly less than the crossing number. Toth later showed that the, for this graph the crossing number is at most 10. And that means we cannot take any drawing and do some rerouting to just have exactly one crossing between each every pair of edges that cross an odd number and zero between every pair of edges that cross an even number. But at least the second part we can do. That's what Pach and Toth showed. If we have a drawing and we have some edges that only have even numbers of crossings, so uh, those edges in this A0, they cross every other edge an even number of times. Then we can redraw it such that no of these edges are involved in any crossings. So for those edges where we only have even crossings, there we can remove them. And Pelsmeier, Schäfer, Stefankovic extended this, that they also could show that we don't introduce new pairs of edges that cross. So we can do something, but we cannot do everything. So the odd crossing number is not the answer. We cannot just look at pairs of edges that cross oddly. But what about the pairwise crossing number? The pairwise crossing number, we just look at pairs of edges that cross at all in a drawing. And clearly, by definition, the odd crossing number is at most a pairwise crossing number, and the pairwise crossing number is at most a crossing number. But is the pairwise crossing number the same as the crossing number? That we don't know. This part is still open.